And in the days that we're living in right now, I'm giving you a strong prophetic word to whoever hears that the mercy of God is still available for you. He is not a mean, amen? He's not a mean God. He's not a harsh God. He's not out to get you and to make you sick. Amen? Amen. Now, in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, this is amazing scripture. It says in verse 22, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Ha, ah, why? Because his compassion fails not. That also, amen, that also means his love. His love is never ending. Amen. He, God is love. So you can say it like this. It is of love and his mercy that we're not consumed. His love fails not. Amen. God is love. Amen. And you look at Jesus. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Hallelujah. So you don't ever see Jesus going around putting sickness and disease on people, problems on people. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is what they do in Africa. We always got to be prepared when, when you're outside in the hot sun preaching. Yeah, you got that. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. This is, this is an anointed rag. I just, you know, wipe my sweat on it just like in the Bible. So if you need healing, I'll lay this on you and you'll be healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right. So God is so good. Jesus never put sickness on people. He never cursed people. He did just the opposite because he said, I only do what I see my father doing. I only say what I hear my father saying. Isn't that amazing? He's an exact display, a physical display of the mercy and the love of God. And in verse 23 in Lamentations 3, it says, they're, I love this, they're new every morning. Just like the manna, you know the children of Israel, they're in the wilderness. You know that story. And they were going into the promised land. For 40 years, God never failed them to make sure every morning they had fresh manna. Amen? That's what this is talking about. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen? God is faithful. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your people today. Thank you for revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to come from your word. Thank you for faith will come alive. Signs and wonders will follow the preaching of your word this day. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Wow. Okay. Great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Whew. Now, you know, Pastor, see you guys have been studying. I know this. You've been studying in Revelation. He, I think he said verse or chapter 15 is where you're at. Now, I reviewed that. Review that chapter, and you know what it talks about. It talks about the bowls of judgment, right? Well, how does this got anything to do with the mercy of God? Well, let me tell you, I, I, it really clicked on me really strong. The days that those bowls of judgment come are because people refuse to acknowledge God. They refuse to accept Jesus, the one true God in eternal life. They refuse to put faith in Him. They refuse to accept the mercy of God. See, that's an unfortunate thing for people. They have been given so much opportunity to receive God's goodness and His forgiveness, His mercy, His healing power, every good thing. Every good thing the blood of Jesus is for you. To have an adoption through the purchased blood of Jesus. Wow, I mean, can you imagine that? He, that is the best Adoption agency. God the Father adopted us by the blood of Jesus. But we have to accept that. That that price Jesus paid is the currency. The heavenly currency, if you will. That puts us in right standing with God, but we have to receive it. And, and if we don't receive it, we don't get the mercies that God wants us to have. That's all He requires. Is to have faith in what He's accomplished through Jesus. Amen. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, you have a truckload or more than a truckload of blessings, of the mercies of God. I love how it says here, it's plural, not just one mercy. Amen? Amen. It's multiple of mercies. 
multitudes of mercy. I got hit over a week ago, ran over by a crazy woman, and she ran off. And it, thank God, I, every day I get in my car, I play the blood of Jesus and angels over my car. I have it on, I have it on video because that's what our company does. They record everything that goes on. So you can see that she took off. She hit me from behind. We were just downtown by Bartle Hall where they got that lane, left lane cut off and you had to merge. Very dangerous area over there. You're not paying attention. You will hit somebody or somebody hit you. I'm yielding to a vehicle trying to get in front of me from my right side. Here she comes barely hit me into my backside. And I didn't know it. didn't see it coming. It really shocked me. But the thing is, I'm thinking, thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for my, my angels. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. The Bible says things will come, you know. It talks about your have tribulation, you have issues that happen in this earth. But you're an overcomer. Hallelujah. In fact, I, 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 <laughs> I it, actually, I was telling my wife, I'd like to have a day off. And I couldn't wait. And then all of a sudden, here, this situation afforded me a day off just to relax and rest. So I, but nothing hurt me. It didn't hurt me. No weapon for me gets you will prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil may be trying to use car accidents or a coronavirus. But the mercy of God surrounds you. And it won't, and it won't take you out. Nothing can take you out. I love what Jesus said about his own life. Nobody takes my life. I will lay it down freely. Amen. Wow, what a, what a, I think that's a, a, that's a mercy of God that you know the authority you have that nothing, no sickness, no disease, no, no catastrophe, no bullet, no hate group can kill you unless you allow it to. That's a mercy of God that you are divinely protected. Hallelujah. That is so good. Now, I'm going to jump over to some other scripture here. Woo! I feel like I'm in Africa today with the hot sun. I love it. Tastes, it, it I almost said it tastes good. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it feels pretty good to me anyway. Thank God we're not in freezing weather. Amen. Now, when you come in contact with God, when you put your faith in Jesus, you come in contact with everything you would need. All your needs are met according to whose riches and glory. God's riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The loving Heavenly Father. When you put your faith in Jesus. I talk to a Muslim friend of mine all the time. We're friends. I, I have no fear of being a friend because Jesus was a friend of sinners. So why not me? That's how you're going to win people. Be friendly to them. That's a mercy. To be friendly to somebody, you're displaying mercy. But you can be really hateful and mean. Just like we've seen you know, in the current situations we've seen the last few years. There's no mercy. I'll, I'll, I'll stand up for this that I was raised by a police officer and I understand right and wrong when it comes to dealing with people my stepfather would get letters written to him from inmates in the jail and, would, and they would tell him thank you for being nice to me being cordial to me, kind to me even when probably they didn't deserve they did need to be manhandled a little bit so what I'm trying to say is I don't agree that everybody goes out there putting their knee on somebody's neck and holding them down so they can't breathe. I, I understand that. That, there is, that. We have to show mercy. And the only way you can really show pure, true mercy is having the love of God in you. That's right. Now, Jesus... Yeah, amen. And so justice, I believe, has been served in that situation. But I'm just telling you, I, I wonder if, if this man was a believer, if he would have handled him a different way. Right. You know? And I'm not defending the other man on the other side. Let's say he was all good and right and perfect. There's two sides of every story. You get me. But see, Jesus still wants to have mercy. You know the story with the woman who was caught in the issue. With, uh, she was caught with uh, committing adultery, right? What did Jesus do? Yeah, let me, hold on. Let me get the biggest rock. Let me pull it up. Ooh, help me pull this one out of the ground. And you guys help me throw this on her. I want to be the first one to throw this on Is that what he said? No. <laughs> He said, you who's without sin, throw the first stone. What was he just doing? Jesus was displaying mercy. When, we, when, when people deserve the worst treatment, the worst penalty for their crimes, Jesus steps in and says, oh, let's have mercy. Amen. 
But people have to accept that mercy. It's not just, it certainly it's freely given, but it also needs to be freely accepted. So if you don't know Jesus today, he's not your savior. There's hope for you today to know that whatever sin you've committed, whatever you're uh, justifying as an okay lifestyle, you can know that it's a sin and you, there's mercy for you. Because if you don't repent, there will be consequences. And I'm not going to be one of those preachers just, you know, you just slip by and say, oh, well, that's okay, it's a new age, it's a new era, let people do what they want. No, that's not the mercy of God. The mercy of God says, hey, I'm also going to tell you there's judgment for sin that you say is okay. We cannot justify lifestyles just because people say it's okay. It doesn't change the word of God. Just because somebody says, I'm going to have a group, we're going to have a pride month, say, yeah, hey, it's okay to be this way. Uh-uh. Yeah? We are we're the salt and the light in this earth, and we do certainly need to show mercy. I've had a woman years ago who was a lesbian who was kissing outside my car. She finally gets in my car, and she says, so, you know, I'm a lesbian, so what do you think about that? I said, well, since you asked me, not that I wouldn't volunteer, in my opinion, but at least she was gracious enough to ask. And I said, well, I'm, I'll let you know I'm a Christian. I'm also a minister. I believe God not, did not create people that way, and that it is a sin, and there's consequences for that. Those who, it says those who, yeah, those are the homosexuals and all those people will have their part in the lake of fire. I didn't write that in the Bible. I didn't come up with that, so don't get mad at me. God created man and woman, male and female. All right? And gee, that's, now let me tell you, we are talking about the mercy of God. So listen, Jesus did answer the, uh, the people will say, well, Jesus never talked about homosexuality. He never answered that issue. Yes, he did. He said in the beginning, God created male and female, period. Uh, Susie and Lucy, he didn't say Steve and Butch or Bill, or, you know. He said, Adam and Eve, God, male and female, he made them. Okay, now, so but there's mercy for those people who live in that lifestyle. I've seen testimonials of people who have been transgendered. They literally cut everything off and became a woman. They grew, had the hormone tra things, the pills they took, and they became a woman. They looked like a woman. They dressed like a woman. And I, you can look it up on YouTube. There's this one man. He said, I, got from, I went from bad to worse doing this to myself. If you look at the statistics, people actually who live that lifestyle, they still get divorced. They get, yeah, they got the gay marriages, but they still get divorced. Does that prove that you being, having a gay marriage and you're married to the same sex is going to help your life being any better? No. They get, and the fact that even the suicide rate is high in those groups. I'm telling you something because of the mercy. God wants to answer issues like this. And then, he's merciful and said, look, if you just turn to me, how much I love you, you're freshly and wonderfully made. I created you that way. Don't get mad at me. And because you're thinking that it's not, you're not happy in this body, well, when you get to know who I am and how much I love you, you are my best. You don't have to worry about what sex you are. You're, you'll find peace in your mind and in your heart when you realize how he thinks of you. He is so merciful. He didn't create you. That's not mercy to create you one way and then let you just go off and say, no, I don't appreciate this and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. That's not mercy. God doesn't allow people to have a debased mind and, to, and, to, and to, to run away from the purity of the understanding of who they are as an individual. But he, he has a mercy there that will let you accept his love if you, if you want to. That's an amazing thing. That's why we don't need to beat those people over the head. Even though it's true they may be going to hell, but the biggest sin that gets people to hell is not receiving Jesus as their Savior. That's what Jesus said. Because they don't believe because they don't believe on me. Then they follow they may follow into some category of a lesbian, homosexual, they may be a murderer, a liar, whatever. So I'm talking about this guy in this YouTube video who gave his testimony. He was saying all this that he was depressed. He didn't find peace in that, changing his, his sex. But when he realized that God loved him, no matter how he was, even when he changed his sex, that satisfied the inner, inner part of him. That changing your sex, changing your hair color, changing your whatever, doesn't really satisfy you until you have the love of God in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. That's the mercy of God. That's his goodness. Amen.
Wow. We deserve a lot. But thank God Jesus took the punishment for our sin upon himself. Amen. Hallelujah. We are recipients of his mercy today. I love his mercy. You know, you'll get pulled over by a cop. What, what's some, some of the first prayers you make? Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, Lord, I claim favor. <laughs> yeah? Is that what you do? You know, you're in trouble anyway, but you're like, oh, God, I need mercy. Oh, wow, you can still do that. You, you, you can claim mercy. I throw myself at the mercy of the court. Let me tell you, the earthly courts will not always grant mercy. But you have a court in heaven. You have a judge in heaven. You have a lawyer called Jesus, the advocate. You're a great and high priest. And he says, all right, let's extend mercy to this person. They may deserve the death penalty, but I play, paid the sacrifice out of my great love and mercy because God so loved or God was so merciful that he gave his only son. Amen? Wow! Woo! That's good news today. Hallelujah. Good news. There's mercy to be received. Mercy to receive and to share. Now Jesus said something I really want to help you understand. Jesus said freely you have received, freely give. How many times have you, how many times have you gotten mercy and you didn't deserve it, but somebody extended it? God, God extended it to you, amen? Well, our big brother Jesus said, hey, freely you receive, freely give. Give mercy. Extend it to people. They do deserve it because God says they do. Not because of they, they could go to church long enough or they can pray long enough or they can fast long enough or they give enough. Oh, hallelujah. You get me? Amen? Thank you, Holy Jesus. His mercies are new every morning. I love in Hebrews 11, 6, what does it say? Come boldly to the throne of grace that you might receive mercy and grace and help in the time of need. God is always ready to send mercy to you, extend it to you. But Jesus said one thing. He said, ask and you shall receive. If you believe what you pray, you shall receive it. You'll have what you say. You'll have what you pray. I receive the mercy of God every day. Amen. Just a few more scriptures here. Hallelujah. The mercy of God is very necessary today. We need to get people to understand His mercy today. So when they enter in, okay, now let, let, me, let me go back. Just to shave back, back into Revelation. Again, as I said in the beginning, when you see those judgments in the book of Revelation, for those who are believers and Christians, we will be raptured, we will be taken out of this earth, and that will be during the seven-year tribulation period. And those times are appointed for unbelievers. We're not appointed to wrath. If you're a child of God, the mercy of God has been extended to you so you can escape that time of judgment on the earth. And it's because people refuse to accept Jesus. Now, there will be believers during that time. There will be 144,000. There will become strong believers. There will, they, some of those will be martyred from what I understand. There will still be a chance for you, for people, you if you're not born again, but I would say get it today instead of waiting until then because it will be much harder to accept, accept the mercy of God back then in that time because the Bible says those are times of God's appointed wrath on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the good news of what he's done for you so that you can be made right with God. Hallelujah. So now here is a time to walk and accept that mercy today. Now is the time. When that time comes after Jesus has brought or taken us out as Christians out of the earth, it's going to be tough for unbelievers. They'll know what's going on. Some of them will. They'll finally get a revelation. Oh, that's what that was. And it will be aliens. And I'm sure the, the, the governments of the world are going to try to lie and explain away what happens when Christians leave. But here's the sad thing. When you see those things happening in the book of Revelation, you read about them. The judgments are coming on. What really hurts my heart so much because of the love and the mercy of God in me, they still raise their fists against God 
and they say blasphemous things against him. They curse him. And they even say, let the mountains follow us. We don't care. They still want to blame God. They still want to hate God. They still want to have their own simple ways. And God say, I've given you so much chance to receive my mercy. If you call out to me. We're in the age of grace. But the time is rapidly approaching when the age of judgment and God's wrath is going to come on this earth. Because we're at the end of the age, folks. And Jesus said the signs and the times that we're living in right now, famines and plagues, earthquakes, pestilences, all that, the lawlessness is abounding, the lawlessness where people are not living mercifully toward each other. You get me? He said these things are just the beginning of sorrows. But when you see these things happen, like what's happened in Israel recently, that's a sign of the time. Wars and rumors of war. There's going to be a time coming when Israel will be surrounded by its enemies and all of the nations around, all those Arabic and Islamic nations, including Iran, including Russia, they're all going to come and attack Israel. It's in the scripture. Read Psalm 83. What I'm saying is these things are rapidly approaching before Jesus returns. And he said, when you see these things happen, look up. Your redemption draws near. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. I'm excited about that. That's his mercy for us as his children that we have been a promise that we will escape these hard times that are coming. It is because of the Lord's mercy. We're not consumed. Amen. And now, if you don't know Jesus and you're watching me, you're hearing me, you can call on him. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever calls on Jesus will have mercy. Amen. And if, if you're not born again, just call on his name and tell Jesus you believe in him. If you're sick in your body, you can say, Jesus, I believe you are my healer. May your mercy demonstrate yourself in my body today. May your mercy demonstrate yourself in my, my pocketbook. Whatever area you're lacking, the mercy of God has an answer for it. God wants, amen. God wants to prove how merciful and good he is. Amen. Hallelujah. May the mercy of God be yours. May you be rich every day of your life. And may you... Freely you have received, freely give it out. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.